Hey guys, it's Neil back with another programming tutorial. Uh, today we're going to take a break from PHP and we're going to start looking at Python. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how Python applications can be tunneled through Tor. Now for this video, I'm going to assume that you already understand some basic Python and that you also understand Tor and how it can be used and that you have a copy of Tor downloaded onto your machine. If you don't have a copy of Tor right now, uh, I will provide the link in the description for this video, but I am going to assume that you already understand what Tor can be used for and the kind of IP masking features that it provides. Uh, so if you want to load up Tor and ensure that the status on the Videlia control panel says that you're connected to the Tor network, uh, that's the first step in tunneling our Python applications through Tor. Uh, whenever you actually open uh, Vidalia and Tor, they create a kind of local proxy on your machine, on your 127.0.0.1 IP address, which you can then connect to through other applications to route all of their traffic through Tor. Uh, this can also be used in Firefox. You can set Firefox's proxy to 127.0.0.1 and the Tor port in order to route all of Firefox's traffic through Tor, however I would recommend that you use the Tor browser bundle instead. Uh, but for this tutorial we're just going to be looking at Python and how to route Python applications through Tor. So right here I have a simple Python script set up. Uh, it's importing three modules right now. It's importing socket, uh, it's importing socks, and it's importing HTTP lib. Uh, now socket and HTTP lib uh, may be obvious as they come bundled along with Python. However, uh, the socks module right here is a module that I found online which is an implementation of the socks proxy uh, kind of protocol for Python. It's written by a gentleman named Dan Heim, uh, so thank you for writing this awesome implementation of socks for Python. Uh, Tor can only be proxied through using socks. It's strictly a socks only proxy. It can't be used as an HTTP proxy, uh, which is why we need this socks module right here. Uh, so right now I have two simple functions in uh, my Python script. I have a main function right here, and I also have a function called connect Tor, which is going to live up to its namesake. It's just going to connect us to Tor. So we're going to write this one first, and in our connect tor function, we're going to say socks dot set default proxy. Uh, set default proxy is just going to um, set the default proxy kind of parameters uh, for socks to uh, route all of our traffic through. Uh, in this case, uh, for the first parameter, we're going to be using socks dot proxy type socks5 because that's the type of proxy we're using. We're going to be using socks5. Uh, we're then going to input the IP address of our socks proxy server which is Tor running on our local machine. So we're going to set that to 127.0.0.1. Uh, in the third parameter we're going to uh, input the port that our proxy server is running on. In this case, it's 9050, which is the default um, port for Tor. And the last parameter we're simply going to set to true. Uh, so now we have our default proxy set up for socks. However, uh, this is only going to work if we're using uh, the socks module to connect to things. Uh, if we try to use socket or HTTP lib at this point, uh, this just going to uh, directly connect to whatever kind of domain name or IP address we uh, try to connect to. It's not going to route our traffic through Tor. Uh, for this reason we need to use the line socket dot socket equals socks dot sock socket. Man, that's a lot of sockets in one line. I kind of got lost in the middle of that, but pretty much what this line does, it, um, it overwrites our default socket object and sets it equal to our socks object instead, which means that if we try to send data through a socket anywhere in our application, it's instead going to go through socks. Uh, similarly, if we try to use HTTP lib to connect to some, uh, maybe a website, which I'm going to show as an example shortly, uh, because it also uses socket, it's then going to go through socks as well. 
So in our main function, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to call connect Tor to make sure we're connected to the Tor network. And then we're going to print out uh, connected to Tor. Uh, this line here isn't really necessary, but I just thought it was a nice little feature. Uh, now I'm going to create a new variable called con and set that equal to http lib dot http that should be in caps http connection and we're going to connect to a domain name myip dot heroku dot com uh, this uh, is a website that I found online which simply outputs your visible IP address in plain text with no HTML surrounding it, which is very useful for console applications like this, as it means you don't have to filter out the HTML just to get your IP address. Uh, in the line below that, we're going to call con.request. Uh, we're going to send a get request through the connection that we just created, and we're just going to uh, request the default page, and then we're going to create yet another variable. We're going to create response equal to con.getResponse which is just going to get the response from the server and store it in this variable right here and finally we're going to want to print response.read out to the screen so what this is going to do right here is it's going to create an HTTP connection to myip.heroku.com and then it's going to send a get request to just get the default page which is just a page containing the viewer's visible IP address. So if we save this uh, tor or if we save this Python file, sorry, and go into our command line, we can run it using tor.py connected to tor, and you can see that uh, the IP address that is visible to Heroku.com was printed out to our console, which in this case is 77.109. Dot one three eight dot forty two. This is not my IP address. This is the IP address of the Tor node that I have been going through. Uh, just to prove that, if we bring up the Tor browser right here, it says your IP address appears to be. And let me just refresh that because I may have a new identity from last time. Um, Yes, uh, your IP address appears to be 77.109.138.42. Uh, sorry about that, I must have had a, a new identity from when I loaded up Tor and when I ran the application, but there you go. Uh, clearly, these two IP addresses are the same, so we're definitely getting all of our HTTP traffic routed through Tor. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was a elaborate explanation for you guys, and I hope you could kind of get the gist of how to route your Python applications through Tor. Uh, please leave a comment if you don't understand anything that I've explained in this video, or you know you can send me a private message or get in touch any way you see fit, I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, see you guys later.